Welcome to Astronomy Daily, where we cover the latest in space and astronomy news. I'm your host, Anna. Today, we've got an exciting lineup that will take you on a journey through some of the most intriguing recent updates in the cosmos. We'll start with NASA's latest move to push the Crew-9 mission launch to September as they delve into the intricacies of Boeing's Starliner spacecraft. Then, we'll shift gears to explore groundbreaking research that peels back the layers on Venus, revealing that our inhospitable evil twin might share more in common with Earth than we ever imagined. Finally, we'll spotlight a compelling study on red dwarf stars and how their stellar flares could pose both challenges and potentials for habitability on nearby exoplanets. So grab your telescopes and your curiosity, and let's dive into today's episode. NASA is postponing the launch of the Crew-9 mission to September due to ongoing analysis of Boeing's Starliner spacecraft. This delay will give mission managers more time to finalize plans for the Boeing crew flight test, which is currently docked at the International Space Station. Thruster issues with the Starliner spacecraft have been the main concern. NASA is taking this extra time to analyze the results of recent hot fire testing and to ensure the reliability of the integrated propulsion system. Until either the Starliner or Crew-8 Dragon departs the space station, there will be no available docking ports for the Crew-9 mission. The delay helps NASA maintain rigorous safety protocols while allowing additional time to study and confirm the performance of the Starliner. Additionally, this pause will enable a careful review of the return flight plans for the Starliner, ensuring every procedure is meticulously thought out before moving forward. This delay isn't just about pushing back the date, it's about ensuring every detail is meticulously checked. NASA's team is using this period to rigorously test and validate Starliner's integrated propulsion system. By taking the time to analyze recent docked hot fire tests and finalize their flight rationale, they aim to guarantee the spacecraft's reliability for its return to Earth. In the meantime, there's an exciting development on the horizon. The Crew-9 mission, scheduled for late September, will not only continue NASA's partnership with SpaceX, but will also be the first crewed flight to launch from Space Launch Complex 40. This newly upgraded site now boasts a state-of-the-art crew access tower, a milestone signifying a new chapter for SpaceX's crewed missions. This move underscores the advancements and collaborations driving modern space exploration. One critical aspect of launching astronauts into space is ensuring their safety in the event of an emergency. With the upcoming Artemis II mission, NASA is stepping up its game by introducing a cutting-edge ground-based emergency egress system specifically designed for rapid evacuation if something goes wrong during the launch countdown. This new system utilizes track cables connected to the mobile launcher, guiding baskets similar to ski lift gondolas down to the launch pad perimeter. In the event of an emergency, personnel can quickly descend from the launch tower using these baskets. Positioned at the same level as the crew access arm, where astronauts enter the spacecraft, the baskets can carry up to five people or a total weight of 1,500 pounds each. The procedure works like a well-oiled machine. As soon as an emergency is declared, crew members will exit the spacecraft or white room on the mobile launcher and make their way to the baskets. From there, they'll ride down the one 335-foot-long cables to reach the ground, far away from any potential danger. Once they've landed, armored emergency response vehicles will be waiting to whisk them away to safety. Artemis II is set to be NASA's first mission with crew aboard the SLS rocket and Orion spacecraft. Though the emergency egress system might never need to be used, its introduction reinforces NASA's unwavering commitment to astronaut safety. Charlie Blackwell Thompson, Artemis launch director, emphasized that these emergency protocols are absolutely essential for crew safety, even though the likelihood of needing them is very low. While it is very unlikely that we will need the emergency egress and pad abort systems, they are built and tested to ensure that if we do need them, then they are ready to go. In addition to NASA's system for Artemis II, SpaceX and Boeing have implemented their own unique egress systems for their respective launches. At SpaceX's Launch Complex 39A, a slide wire cable system is used, enabling baskets to swiftly transport personnel away from the launch pad in an emergency. Meanwhile, at Space Launch Complex 41, Boeing and United Launch Alliance have designed seats that ride down slide wires, similar to a thrilling zipline experience, ensuring a quick and efficient evacuation. These measures, although different, all share the common goal of prioritizing the safety and swift egress of the crew and personnel involved in these monumental missions. New research suggests that Venus, often dubbed Earth's inhospitable evil twin, 
may have once been tectonically active, despite its current stagnant lithosphere. Today, Venus is known for its extreme surface conditions, temperatures hot enough to melt lead and surface pressures intense enough to crush most materials. However, this new study reveals that the planet's surface features, such as faults, folds, and volcanoes, indicate a history of significant tectonic activity. Fabio Capitanio, a researcher from the Monash University School of Earth, Atmosphere, and Environment, emphasized that the discovery challenges our existing understanding of planetary evolution. The study, conducted in collaboration with NASA, examines striking plateaus called tesserae on Venus, which resemble Earth's earliest continental formations. Capitanio explained that the intense geological processes on Venus billions of years ago could be compared to those that shaped the Earth's early continents. The team's findings offer new perspectives on the geological similarities between Venus and Earth, potentially unlocking secrets about the early history of our own planet. Stay tuned for more exciting updates from missions like Da Vinci, Veritas, and Envision, which aim to delve deeper into Venus's geological past. The research team utilized data from NASA's Magellan spacecraft, which first imaged the entire surface of Venus back in 1990. They coupled this data with advanced computer modeling to unravel the geological processes at play. The findings suggest that the extreme heat on Venus may have caused its surface to thin and melt, forming elevated areas as molten rock rose. Over time, this stretching and subsequent cooling left behind the tesserae plateaus we see today. These features are strikingly similar to Earth's ancient continental formations, indicating that Venus and Earth may have shared a more comparable geological history than previously believed. A recent study has shed light on the potential dangers facing habitable planets around red dwarf stars. The research, led by astronomers from the University of Hawaii Institute for Astronomy, reveals that these stars can emit far ultraviolet radiation at levels much higher than previously believed. This finding has striking implications for the habitability of planets orbiting red dwarfs. The team utilized archival data from NASA's now decommissioned Galex Space Telescope which observed the sky in ultraviolet wavelengths from 2003 to 2013. Through advanced computational techniques, the researchers were able to identify and analyze flares from around 300,000 nearby stars. Their results show that the far UV radiation from these stellar flares is, on average, three times more energetic than earlier models had assumed and can reach up to 12 times the previously expected levels. This intense UV radiation could have a dual impact on surrounding planets. On one hand, it might erode planetary atmospheres, which is detrimental to the potential for life. On the other hand, it could also contribute to forming RNA building blocks, essential for the creation of life. Therefore, while the elevated UV levels pose a threat, they could also play a role in the fundamental processes that lead to life. This study calls for more observational data to better understand the environments around these less massive stars and their impact on exoplanet habitability. This high-energy UV radiation emitted by red dwarf stars is a double-edged sword. On one hand, it has the potential to erode the atmospheres of nearby planets, stripping away the very layer that could make those worlds habitable. Without a protective atmosphere, these planets could be bombarded by harmful radiation, making the surface inhospitable to life as we know it. On the other hand, UV radiation might play a crucial role in the formation of RNA building blocks, which are essential for the creation of life. This suggests a complex interplay, where the same forces that could threaten a planet's habitability might also foster the very beginnings of life. The exact mechanisms behind this far UV emission remain unknown, but it's clear that understanding them is key to unlocking the mysteries of early planetary environments. More data from space telescopes will be necessary to delve deeper into this phenomenon. Further studies will aim to reveal how widespread these intense radiation events are and their true impact on the habitability of planets around these common yet volatile stars. That's it for today's episode of Astronomy Daily. I've been your host, Anna. If you enjoyed today's stories and want to stay updated on all things space and astronomy, make sure to visit our website at astronomydaily.io. There, you can sign up for our free daily newsletter, catch up on all the latest space and astronomy news with our constantly updating news feed and listen to all our back episodes. Don't forget, you can also find us on social media by searching for Astro Daily Pod on Facebook, X, YouTube, and TikTok. Thanks for tuning in. And as always, stay curious. Astronomy Daily.